I first sat down at a loom and started working on textiles and feeling the cloth, that brought memories of home. It brought memories of my, my mother and my grandmother. It was just a love. The paints and the sculpture were my own, but the textiles were my family. I was born in Sisseton, South Dakota. My father was an educational field agent, why we were there with the Bureau of Indian Affairs. And his career took us all over the United States. We went to uh, Nespelum, Washington, the Colville Agency, and then the Blackfoot Agency in Montana, where we were for six years. It was very much a commune kind of life. We had our own dairies, our own bakeries. And it was just this wonderful upbringing of a community. She had a really amazing family of women. Margaret had two women in her life, her mother and her grandmother. The kind of childhood she had, it was artistic, it was creative. They were always sewing or quilting. They were always making things that were useful and beautiful. And I think that that carries over into everything she does now. My undergraduate work was painting and sculpture. I'd been painting since I was in the first grade, and selling my paintings in junior high and high school. That's what I thought my career would be. But when I transferred to textiles and sat at a loom for the first time, I knew this was something that I had a passion for and I feel like it went back to my grandmother and my mother in that they were always working in textiles in our home, but I'd never considered that my art. It was just like home things that they did. But as I progressed along, I saw where textiles were an art form and this could be my career. I was mesmerized by Margaret's work. It was groundbreaking for what was happening in our region. She's a pioneer. Mahoda has been around since 1984. It is two separate businesses with the same name, but one is the handwoven studio, the other is the textile business, and they're very different. Mahoda is my great, great, great grandmother. Uh, she is from Mississippi. She had lands there, and in 1844, at removal, she came to Oklahoma and that's who I've named my businesses after and have always been very proud of that, that. I had an ancestor who did walk the Trail of Tears. It's very exciting to know that I am where my ancestors were. And so that's when Mahoda Textiles came into being, is that wanting to create our designs that were really Chickasaw-based, that were uh, Mississippian-based designs, our Southeast tribes are matrilineal. So the women set the tone. What they've done with Mahoda, they've taken those ancient motifs, but they've created this contemporary expression of their Chickasaw identity. And Margaret's not afraid to be feminine. There's a beautiful combination of toughness and softness at the same time. And she's a hard worker. And I think that, that there are values that she imparts that are so important to our culture. And those are seen in kindness, and it's in nurturing, even in mentoring in her weaving studio, where she is so patient. When I had the opportunity with the Chickasaws to rent this space for a gallery, my idea was to teach Chickasaws weaving but you take whoever will come to the door, you take in. <laughs> Teaching in the studio has given me a group of women who are passionate about textiles. I feel like I'm turning it over to the next generation to continue. And that's been my whole dream, is to try to mentor, try to teach, so that this continues on, and the name of Mahoda continues on. And the same goes with the textile business, of seeing these young women step up and, and teaching them design and the aesthetics of it have really been rewarding also. Our tribal learning environments 
They embody not only the ancient, but the contemporary. So we're very interested in passing on traditional knowledge, the things that make us who we are and help us reach back into honoring our ancestors and knowing who we were at another time. Margaret models that you really can live your dream. I stayed the course. I kept on at something I loved. Time flies by so quickly, you don't realize how you are progressing until I started looking back at where I had come from. And it's, it's, time is such a evasive thing that you don't realize what you're doing at the time. And then when you look back on it, it's wow, you know. So I think that when you struggle in the beginning, and you have to make things work for you because you have a passion, it means more.